Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hi, everyone. We're glad you're with us. I'm going to, oh, sorry, turn up my volume. And we're just, good morning. I see one person's on right now. Hi. Good morning, everyone. All right, today we're just going to start out with our pledge like we always do. Mm. Get a cup of coffee going. Um, all right, so today we're going to start out with a pledge. Ready? See, got it. All right, here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're going to start a new masterpiece today, and we have an artist that we're going to be talking about. He's not a very well-known artist at all. So let me get this flipped around like I always do. You're going to need two pieces of paper. I don't know if we're going to use them today or not. We'll figure it out as we go. So there's our paper. Good morning, everyone. So what we're going to need today is you're going to need paper, pencil, eraser, ruler. We won't be using a ruler that much. Um, if you have paint, that's great. We'll watercolor paint. We might not be painting today, but like, you know, there's watercolor paint right here. Or you could use Crayola markers. Um, and a paintbrush with water, but we might not be painting today. This is going to be our final assignment right here that we're going to be creating right here. And this is a watercolor collage. Good morning, the Perez family. Good morning, the Kelly family. Good morning, Mom. Good morning. Um, Hi, Yeah, the Pedans, they're, everybody's here. So you guys can see what we're going to create. And I wanted to show you, we hand me that big iPad. Thanks. I wanted to show you, I already put some of his artwork on my page, but I wanted to show you guys to, he just really, Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about Pete Cromer? Well, to start off, we don't actually know much about him. We were looking online to find any information, and even on his website, he doesn't have any information about himself, because he's a very new artist. Mm -hmm. But he's from the Gold Coast, right? He, yeah, he's from Australia. Awesome. So, this is the little biography that we did find. Hold on just a second. Bowie. Okay. Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. Pete Cromer is a designer, illustrator, and happy art creator based on Victoria's Surf Coast. With a keen eye for design and creativity, his distinctive style of painting involves a psychedelic combo of simplistic shapes and bright colors that represent either personalities, animals, or people. All right, so here are some of the examples, and you can kind of see when you're looking at these examples, he's used collage, and collage means you're gonna cut things out. So we're going to be creating a collage, and then you can see he has, you know, his birds that he loves. And we're going to make a bird today. And you can see the pelican that he's made. And you could go to his website and you can see all the items there. But what he does is he takes watercolor and then he cuts out the watercolor and then he adds layers of, and this is kind of like looking like, I would love to see some of your artwork looking like this, totally different than ours. Um, and here's another one. And here's another one. And you can just see he's just got shapes and it's so beautiful what he's done with his artwork. So we're just gonna try to, you know, just look at his artwork and create like he did. And I just think it's really, really pretty. It is pretty. So for us to do this final project right here, and I've got pencil lines right there. I don't know how I got pencil lines on my final. But I've got to get that off. That's going to drive me crazy. Um, also, I think glue stick is the best thing to use for this. I started out with rubber cement. And it was really hard to work with for this project because of the small pieces. So I definitely would encourage glue stick or Elmer's glue. Also, if you're using copy paper, you're going to have to let this dry and you're going to have to put it underneath books so it can smash out. And I'm like trying to get some of that rubber cement off. I'm wiping off that right now. And there's some places I still need to glue down here too. So today we're going to start out drawing what we're going to paint in. Okay. So if everybody's ready, is everybody ready? I hope you are. We're going to start drawing what we're going to actually paint and we're going to use our whole paper and again i'm using a thicker paper but it is not watercolor paper if anyone has watercolor paper at home and you want to use that that's a great idea let me tell you so 
what we're going to do first, obviously, is we're going to find our middle of our paper, and we're going to place a dot there, because we're going to actually, like, try to section our paper off. So, everybody, find your middle. Good morning, and also, um, it is Mrs. Lyon's birthday today, our school treasurer. So, if you get a chance, let's say happy birthday to her. So, in this one fourth, if we're going to take this paper and, you know, make an invisible line and say this is half and this is half here, we're going to actually draw our bird's body, which is a big letter N that's a baby N. Lower Watch N. lowercase N. And I'm going to use my straight edge for my nice cut at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that middle part where I put my dot and I'm going to draw a line down like a hump, like an N. So like that, everybody do that right now. Yes, happy birthday to her. I got, hi guys, hi, hi, Sia. Hi, Sia, I noticed that you, Sia, uh, painted your mommy's nails this weekend, that's pretty. So we got a hump down and this is for our bird's back. And again, you wanna draw light. You'll be cutting on these lines later and that's okay. And then you'll need scissors two but not yet and then what i'm going to do is come forward and i'm going to come down and i'm going to make that end and if i want to i can use my ruler to straighten that line out because that's going to be the front part of my bird and perfect i've got my first section in and you don't want this to be too gigantic and it's going to go over your middle remember this is my dot for the middle part of my paper so that actually is going to go over that now this was a free printable on his website, but I didn't want to print it out. I wanted us to do a masterpiece with this. So we're going to actually just make our own. If you guys print it out, there's really no you in this. It's all him. And so when you do this, this makes this yours and it makes it unique and it makes it different. So, all right. So we've got our first beautiful uh, big shape and look it's about the size of my hand and then I'm gonna let you see Lindsay's after I'm done or right now so Lindsay's drawn really lightly and you can see hers barely on there but that's nice that you can barely see it and that's her start now over here we're not gonna waste our paper because hopefully you're using nicer paper than um, than uh, copy paper and if you are using copy paper that's fine too, but you just might have to wait longer for your copy paper to dry. So we're just making simple shapes right now, and it's not gonna make sense to any of us right now, but we'll put them all together, and that's where I come in to mm. help you out. So next, oh, I'm gonna have a you- pretty ring. Oh, thank Aww. you, we got this in Turks and Caicos yes. when we went to Turks and Caicos from a local artist. Um, what was his name? Gosh, I can't remember his name up. right now. Um, Worthington, no, Wellington, the Wellington, Wellington. Wellington. Yes. His last name's Wellington, and he is from um, Turks and too. Caicos. And yes, Lindsay has a necklace oh, on. We'll have to show you. That's all right. We'll show you later. <laughs> She's wearing one of his pieces too. And he was a high school um, student, and he started making bead necklaces, mm -hmm. and just found. And this is actually crushed sand and a epoxy. So everybody draw a straight line and I want you to turn your paper because I want you to make a D look right here. But look, I am not going all the way up my bird. It, I'm kind of stopping a good eraser short or a little bit, I'd say two inches or an inch and a half short. And then I want you to make a D, but it's going to be uh, more like sunset D like this. And again, draw right to you or draw light till you get it right. And what's so great is when you cut these out, oh my gosh, my glue stick is falling over every time I turn my paper. So you want it to look like a D and there we go. And we're gonna need two pieces of white paper. All right. Oh, you still need a paintbrush? Okay, so the Perez family, if you want to, please DM me today after our lesson, okay? The Perez family, will you please DM me or message me on Facebook afterwards, okay? Or I'll message you. All right. Um, if you don't have a paintbrush and you live in Fishers, Indiana, I want you to DM me. All right. 
So the next, we're gonna make another letter D, but we're gonna keep space in between because when we paint, I'm gonna zoom this out, when we paint, we're going to actually not worry about staying in our lines, which is kind of fun. But we wanna leave room so we don't drip into our other paint. So I don't want you to go above your bird. So I'm gonna move it up, I'm gonna draw a line, you guys can see first. And we want this D to be a little bit smaller. But we're just curving it so we can have more room on our paper. Or we're putting it so that we can have more room on our paper because we're gonna be cutting all this out later. So you want this D a little bit smaller like that. And again, this is not going to make any sense to you yet. And that's okay. We're just prepping our area and draw light till you get it right. And we're just getting everything ready. And I can see my middle of my paper still with my dot so that I can see where I'm supposed to be. And that looks good for me. Awesome. Good morning, Good morning Leonard. to the Leonards. How are you guys doing? So the things that you've missed so far, Leonard family, is we've got a piece of paper. We put a dot on it. We've made a big letter N that's a little bit more curved. We are making a Pete Cromer uh, animal. And again, I want yours to look uniquely you. Oh my gosh, if that glue stick falls over one more time. <laughs> oh, glue stick. <laughs> oh, glue stick blues. Um, so, yeah. So funny. Good morning. Nice <laughs> oh, my gosh. So fun. Feels like a Monday. It's a Tuesday, but it feels like a Monday. So, this is Lindsay's. You can see she's made two letter Ds, one larger, one smaller. And, again, this isn't going to make any sense to you right now. But this is us getting our collage ready. So, we're going to do a lot of these... Um, raindrop shapes so right here i'm gonna draw and we might not use all these raindrop shapes okay but we might so right here i want you just to draw a raindrop and again that is an organic shape we call it a raindrop because that's our symbol for a raindrop do raindrops really look like that probably not <laughs> no but that's our symbol do hearts look like this Absolutely not. That's our symbol. I don't know. how. That's a good question. Somebody find out that answer for me. How do they even come up with this for the symbol of our hearts? That's a very good question, Lindsay. Excellent question. See, I love how questions come up. And that's an organic shape, too, because really, it's a symbol, actually. It's a symbol because mm -hmm. we, as the United States, have used that as a heart. But, yeah, that'd be very interesting to know. Now, next to that, remember you wanna leave space. I want you to go ahead and draw just a circle. And you can draw it as nice as you want. And I'd say that that circle's about a dime size. Mm. Like, like a thumbprint. Thumb yeah, so. thumbprint, thumbprint size. Yep, there we go, there we go. Good morning, Ooh. Mrs. Burger, good morning. Oh my gosh, no idea, yeah. Isn't that crazy that we use that for a heart symbol and we don't even have a heart that looks like that. It doesn't even look like that. Not uh, probably not, he's probably texting and looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. Next, we're gonna draw like a big quotation mark. So you're gonna draw a line that's straight like this. And I'm gonna zoom in, cause I think you guys know where I am on my paper. And I'm gonna show you, okay, so now it kind of curves down like that. And then you just take this side and you curve it in like that. And it looks like a big quotation mark, I think. Yeah, he does. Like a 3D quotation mark. There we go. So that's a little bit above your uh, head of your animal right there. And right here above your head, we're going to draw a decent sized circle. Now, you could take something like my Elmer's glue. This is perfect, actually, this bottle. And, you know, take it and draw a circle later if you want. You can leave room and you're like... Oh, but I don't have a circle with me. Well, I just always, you know, there you go, like that. That's a perfect circle. If you don't have something that size, you can actually do it with your hand. That's fine. But if you have something to trace with, that's great too. Again, I don't want to make it hard on you to do something like this. So if we can use something, why not? Right? I mean, come on. We're smart. Now, I have a glue stick with me and I'm gonna make a smaller circle right here 
and I'm gonna wait for you guys for a minute, but I'm just gonna make that smaller circle right there. I'm excited for this project. I am too. This is a gorgeous masterpiece, and I'm excited to see all the different color variations that you're gonna use, especially color theory. Like Lindsay was saying, she looked at flowers this weekend. Did you wanna talk about that for a second? Oh yeah, so when I'm here with you guys, I'm also learning as well. I was flower shopping with my dad this weekend, and looking at all the arrangement of flowers, I was just like, I understand why they put that flower with this flower, and those colors with that colors, and I texted Miss Meyer, and I was just like, I'm learning things from the show as well, because all I could see when looking at flowers was color theory. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And hopefully you guys are doing that too. You're implementing what you're learning in this art uh, classroom virtually, and you're using it in your everyday life, or you're seeing it. Like when you're out, you know, side your house, you know, can you see the spring colors? Can you see the monochromatic color schemes? Like I have a tree in my front yard that's light pink and dark maroons and it's gorgeous and it has a lot of uh tints and shades of red and it's a really pretty tree all right guys so this is your big circle that's your little circle they should you know obviously fit inside of each other again we'll be cutting and using scissors too but we won't be cutting today so next to that i'm going to have you take a ruler if you have a ruler and I want you to draw a straight line up and down. And I'm not telling you what these things are yet because I don't want it in your head. Sometimes you can get in your head and you can go, this isn't for me. Oh, I can't do this. This is too hard. I can't believe I can't make a beak. You know, that's why you got to get that out of your head. That's okay. why um, in, older, like in um, upper grade levels of art, we drew a self-portrait of ourselves once. And... Our teacher said, do not draw the picture of you while looking at it. Rotate your paper. Turn it upside down. Just so if you're looking at your nose, then you're going to try and draw a nose. Mm -hmm. but instead of looking at it for what it is. And that's a huge thing that Nani talks about, too, and I talk about. Um, oh, and by the way, I'm not Karen. I'm her daughter. Oh, good morning. <laughs> uh, hi, guys. All right. So... Um, yeah, Nani talks about that a lot, my my mom, Mama Meyer. Um, there's a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. So now, guys, watch. We're going to make the letter U like this. Watch. The letter U or a letter J, or it looks like a hook, doesn't it? And so we're going to make that first hook coming off right here. So when you draw and you try to draw what you're looking at, sometimes your left brain will get in your head and your right brain just needs to see the shapes. That's it. So when I'm showing you this, and we're gonna draw another letter U, and again, one more letter U. And you wanna leave room at the bottom for a stick like that, and then have it come together at the bottom. So it kinda of looks like a big comb right there, but that looks nice. And then I'm going to turn it this way. So a lot of times, and actually, if I said, let's just go ahead and draw this bird together, you guys probably couldn't do this. But now that we're piecing it together, it's going to make it a lot easier for you guys. So that's a good way if you guys ever want to create your own art piece. Instead of looking at it for what it is, rotate your picture or Absolutely. break it down into pieces like this. It yes. will help you become more successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with her more. So we have room here for another teardrop. Again, that is an organic shape. So we're just going to make a teardrop. And like I said, you're going to need scissors for this assignment. And cutting is going to be a big part of this project. It really is. So we have room over here too. So we've got two teardrops. Um, we're gonna go over here below this like letter E right here. All right. Um, check your text. Lindsay, check your text. Yeah, I saw. What'd it say? Nani has paintbrushes for you to give away. Oh, thank you. Nani, oh my mom. Yeah, if anybody needs paintbrushes and you live in the Fishers area, please let me know. Um, DM me uh, on Facebook, uh, email me at wmeyer at hsc.k12.in.us. You can email me. If you need paintbrushes, I need to know. Okay, so right here we're going to make a triangle. Sorry, and I'm talking while I'm making that triangle right there. 
And I might make that triangle a little bit smaller later on, but right now I'm good for it. It's good. And then we're gonna make a little red, oh, not red, see I'm giving you colors right now, but a little circle right there, perfect. All right, this paper's starting to fill up really good. We still have space up here. So what we're gonna do up here on the top is I'm gonna draw a line that like looks like a big hook like this, almost, gosh, what does that look like, Lindsay? Like a wavy line? What do you think, wavy line? Yeah. It looks like a wave. And there's the top of my paper. If you don't have room at the top of your paper to make what we're making, you can always get another piece of paper. Like this is important that this stays pretty big. And then I'm gonna draw a line up to the top of that corner. And as soon as I get to that corner, I'm gonna start making a curve like a letter U or like a J upside down like that. So I'm up to the top of the corner of my paper. I'm drawing a little bit dark for you. And then as I go through, I'm gonna go through and draw a line out like this. And then I'm gonna go through and draw another one. And I want five total. And you can make yours any way you want. Just make sure that they all get together like that, like five, like that. That looks good. Oh, Lindsay, that looks pretty good. Yep, fix it up. So it should kind of angle around and there's like one letter U, two, or they look like N's, three, four, and then five. All right. Yes, I will slow down. Sorry about that, Leonard family. Sorry about that, yes. So as we're doing this, like I said, um, you can see now, listen, if you've ran out of room on this piece of paper, just grab one more piece of paper and you can draw that on a different piece of paper. So if you've ran out of room, don't freak out. You're all right. You can go ahead and just get another piece of paper and you'll be fine, okay? Oh God, I like that Let me see. So this is Lindsay's and this is what Lindsay's looks like compared to mine. There we go. And again, we're just prepping for our collage. We're prepping for our collage. Next, we're gonna see how everybody's doing. What's that say? So, hold on. Thank you, sorry that sounded bossy. Ethan is trying to type fast and not fall behind at the same Aww. time. It's okay. No, we understand. we understand, we get it. We understand, Ethan, I don't want you to fall behind. You're fine, honey. You're absolutely fine. Ethan, you're such a good artist, you got this. You really do. And sometimes so, we forget that we we're forget, teaching yeah, and yeah. not just doing it ourselves. Exactly. So, like I said, so while people are catching up right now, we're just creating like organic shapes and simple shapes to create a masterpiece like this right here. And we're going to be overlapping and we're going to be using watercolor paint and we're just prepping today. We're prepping so that we can have this beautiful Pete Cromer piece. Um, and again, there's really not much information about him uh, other than he loves animals. And these animals are obviously, the animal that we're creating, I think it looks a lot like a, oh, what do you think it looks like, Lindsay? What's the name of that animal? Uh, I think it looks a lot like a, oh. oh. Have you ever seen that movie? This is a kid's movie. It reminds me from the kid's movie, Rio. Rio? Do you remember that at all? Nope, nope, nope. Um, but definitely, it's a um, cockatiel, a cockatiel, oh, yes. yes. All right, is everybody ready to go on? Are we all good? Everybody's saying hold on to us, so sorry. So yes, I'm gonna show you that again. So again, we're creating, this could be a little tricky right here for you. So I'm gonna erase this one and do it again real quick and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it while I'm erasing this. Why are and you erasing it? Because I'm gonna redo it again oh. for friends that might not have got it the first time because this is where we can get, don't get mad. Listen to me, don't get mad. Mad's gonna do nothing but turn your brain off. Just say, I'm gonna try again, I'm gonna try again. So, I'm gonna zoom in, and remember, if you get mad, that is okay. But just calm down, take a couple deep breaths. And try it again, because getting mad is gonna get you nowhere. Just say, you know what? I tried, I failed, I'm gonna try it again. Remember, I didn't get it right the first time. 
Have you seen the new Lion King? No, Is I have there not. A new Lion King? Well, I think there was one that came out. Yes, like in the past fall. So look, guys, I bet that the animals look like that from the Lion King, the new one. Okay, so look, guys, I'm gonna take this and start with a little curve, and then I'm gonna draw a long wavy line. Okay, and it almost, almost looks like there we go. And then it doesn't have to be perfect. It almost looks like a hook right there. All right. Exactly. Failing is learning. It is so 100% learning. I'm so learning. glad you said that. I'm so, so glad you said that. Failing is learning because you're not learning if you don't sit there and fail. I mean, you got to fail, guys. I fail too. I mean, you've seen what I've done. I fail all the time in front of you guys. And it's okay. Um, and mistakes, you know, like Bob Ross said, happy little mistakes. Oh, man, my brother was obsessed. <laughs> oh, I need to watch it. I need to watch that, totally. I need to watch The Lion King, the new one. I love Disney movies. They always I make do. me cry. Okay, so that first line right here, you're going to, you know, make that letter N, lowercase n. And then just next to it, you're going to make another lowercase n, like this. And they can connect. And then you're going to kind of curve them around so that they go towards that back. You know what I'm saying? So as you're making your ends, they curve around and it can touch the top of your paper if, if you want. And then this one's going to kind of come in here and then you're going to make another letter end to connect that. And again, when you cut your paper out, you can fix up any goof that you make. And so it's not going to look exactly like this because when you cut, you're not, you're not a computer, um, oh, I love that. You guys love that movie. Okay. So <laughs> is everybody caught up? Ready to move on. We've got two more things to place on this paper and then we're done, or three more things to place on this paper, then we're done with this piece. And then we're gonna start on a second piece of paper. So if you need another piece of paper, I want you to get one more because it's gonna take two pieces of paper because we're gonna add so much onto our bird, okay? So right here, I'm gonna do a big teardrop, but now watch. When I do this big teardrop here, it's gonna curve more, almost like a quotation mark, like this. It's gonna curve and come back through, like that. Just like that. Awesome. And you want it to, you know, it, you don't want them to overlap the other ones, but you want them far enough away that if you're gonna paint on that, you're gonna have a section where you can't paint. So a big quotation mark right there almost and you want it so that if you are painting, you could go outside that line a little bit or you could cut it down a little bit. That's fine. And then we're gonna do another one just like that right here in this space because we don't wanna waste our paper, especially if we're using a nicer paper. We wanna use every bit of our paper. So right there, I've got that. And then one more circle for fun, and again, we might not use all of these, especially, um, you might not use all of these. It's okay if you don't, that's fine, and we might have to cut them down a little bit more as we go, but it's totally okay, so. Um, I also saw the Aladdin. Oh, cool, very cool. I haven't even seen that. I didn't even know there was a new Aladdin. I'm I have any, I am behind too. So. <laughs> I live under a rocket. <laughs> this is your first piece right here, all right? This is your first piece. So when you get this done, you're gonna put this aside because we're not gonna paint yet today. We're gonna draw our second piece of paper. So I need you to get a second piece of paper out. And again, I'm trying to get a nicer, thicker one. I have two different papers here. I've got one that's a little bit thinner, and I've got one that's a little bit thicker. I wanna use my thicker paper. Again, if you have watercolor paper, that's great. I'm gonna wait for just a moment on this so that you guys can see that. Again, you're drawing a big teardrop, a little teardrop, and this teardrop's curved, and then you're gonna draw a circle right there. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. I'm so excited for this one. I really like this. I like this one too. I this love is collage. totally. I love collage too. All right. So everybody ready to move on to their next piece of paper? It feels like spring. It does feel like spring. It does. It does. It does. All right. Here we go. We're gonna move on to our next piece of paper, and you're gonna need a ruler. 
So we're gonna put that piece of paper away and you're gonna keep your paper portrait. You're gonna find your middle. And now you're gonna take a ruler or if you don't have a ruler, any kind of straight, edge. Kind of straight edge is gonna work, a book or whatever, and you're gonna draw a line. There you go. There we go. All right. Now, so, once... Hold on. So one sec. Okay, if yours is frozen, the best thing we found out is if you just leave the live and then you come back. Right. And we'll give you a second if you want to do that. Yep. So if you're, paper, if you're freezing, Lindsay just said the best thing to do is to leave the live video and come back in. Sometimes it happens. I'm sorry, guys, that it's freezing for you. Oh, no, Frozen the movie, I oh, bet. Oh. <laughs> the new Frozen movie. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, no. Now, I want Super you guys right to think of, okay, this half, I want you guys to think of it all on its own. And I want to divide this into thirds, mean, meaning I need one section here, one section in the middle, and one section here. So I want equal parts. So you can guesstimate by using your hand and going one, two, three. That looks really good. So I'm going to go one, place a dot, two, place a dot, three. Do they have to be perfect? No. No, they don't have to be perfect. No, no, no. Not at all. All right. Okay. So I'm going to put my dots here and then I'm just going to divide this into three sections. One, two, three. And we're going to use this to paint different colors later and use this for extras if we need this for extras, okay? So that's it, it looks almost like, you know, a fence that you've just made, okay? Again, this is for painting later on, okay? Next, we're going to do a series, I want you to turn your paper upside down and I'll wait for everybody. So you're gonna turn your paper upside down and I'm gonna wait for everybody to get ready. And so you've got your three sections here. All right. Now, we just talked about that heart symbol a little bit ago, didn't we, Lindsay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna make an uneven heart and we're gonna make it in this corner and we're gonna go about, we're gonna use about half of our space. So I'm gonna make a circle for the size that your heart should be in, right about I'm gonna draw a light guiding circle. So my circle is about the size of a cup, okay? So I know my heart is gonna fit inside that circle. Got it? So it's about the size of a coffee cup or a cup, and you don't need to get a cup to do that. You just need, or the size of your fist. And you then- You just use your eye. Oh, you could use your Guess eye, you right. May. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line down and make a letter J like this, and I'm gonna come back through and drop it down like this. Watch, a letter J. And this is, a, again, I'm using my sketching lines to get it right first, like that. A little bit big, uh, that's fine, Lindsay. Look, Lindsay's looks really pretty. Lindsay did a nice job. So this one hump is gonna be much smaller than your other hump of your heart. So your other hump of your heart is gonna be much bigger. So it looks like an irregular heart symbol, like this, just like that. And that's it. And then I'm gonna erase my guidelines that I used. And you don't have to erase your guidelines if you don't want to, but I am just so that you guys can make your heart there. That looks really nice. So again, slow down just a bit? yes, so there is the letter J right, or a hook, and then I've made this side much bigger, like that. And if you didn't get a certain thing drawn correctly, as soon as we stop going live, you can come back to it and look at it real quick and say, oh yeah, that's what I needed to do. Again, we're just drawing all the shapes that we need, and right now we're working on some organic shapes, what we need to create our piece of art. All right, so is everybody ready to move on? Did you guys get that heart? If not, listen, that heart can be tricky. If you want to, you can wait until the end and draw your heart later. And I'm gonna just fin 
fix that up a little bit more for me. There we go, I like that. Oh, I might actually bring that up a little bit higher. See, now I'm seeing things that I wanna do differently <laughs> as I'm waiting. Again, you can always go back and rework your artwork without us here. Totally rework it. All right, so next. I hope we're ready to move on. Let's see, oh, Leonard's, okay. So, you guys listen to me. If you did not get your heart, it's okay. You can skip over it right now and work on it later because this is tricky. This is the hardest one that we're going to do on this board, okay? Back so, barking at the guy on the TV. Oh yeah, they love to bark at people on TV. So right here, I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna draw a line that's straight, pretty big like that. Perfect, perfect. And I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see this. There we go. And I'm gonna draw the letter D backwards. And it almost looks like a sunset. Is it a little sliver? Like a little sliver, a little sliver. <laughs> yep, all right. Again, if that heart was too much for you, you should be moving on to this and you can always go back to your heart, I promise. It'll still be there. Because <laughs> I would really like to get these all uh, drawn out today, which I think we're gonna get time to do that. All right, next to that, once you've done your letter D, you're gonna do a teardrop right here. A teardrop, awesome. And you know what? I'm gonna make this teardrop pretty big. I'm gonna make it bigger than I thought. I'm gonna go, look, so look, I made a mistake. Look, I made a mistake. I'm gonna erase it and restart. There we go. And I'm gonna make my teardrop a little bit bigger. I know I said the past triangles are my favorite shape, uh -huh. but I really do like teardrops. You like the teardrop I shape? I like drawing them, it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's just a circle on the end, you know, and then it goes into a triangle. So maybe you like that triangle with that droop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. All right, so we've got that teardrop, and you can make it chunky if you want to. You know, you can make it your own ideas for this. You can do whatever you want. Again, this is your paper, and they don't need to look like mine. I mean, I'd like for them to look somewhat like mine, but they don't have to look exactly like mine. And then moving over, we're just gonna draw a smaller teardrop right here. We're gonna draw lots of teardrops, guys. All right. And so we're gonna just draw a smaller one. And what I've noticed when I was cutting these out is that I can make them smaller and I can make them fit where I want them to fit. And as we go through, we'll figure it out together. And then again, another teardrop going this way. Boy, there are a lot of teardrops, guys. So if you don't know how to draw a teardrop, you're gonna learn <laughs> All right now. And then I'm gonna make a big teardrop. I'm gonna actually curve mine and make it bigger. I like those big teardrops. I'm gonna make this one big right here and fit in right there. A big teardrop, big old teardrop. And I'm gonna slow down just a little bit once, but you guys can see if you go back through this you're gonna see that we're just drawing random teardrops for the rest of this, basically. And they kind of curve and things like that and different do things, shape, different shapes. Different sizes. Uh-huh, different um, curves to them. You know, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. All right, so I've got my first teardrop here. And then I need another teardrop next to it like this, but look, this is gonna curve and look like almost like a letter C, and look, it's gonna kinda like chunky it back. <laughs> yep, there we go. All different kinds of teardrops. Now that one's kinda close to this one, so actually I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move that one over. Look, see, another mistake I made. I'm just gonna move that one over, just a little bit more. Cause when I paint, I'm kinda sloppy when I paint, especially with watercolors. Oh, that's Best way to do yeah, it. and with watercolors, when we start painting with watercolor tomorrow, you guys want to have a lot of paper towel or tissue that you can dab with. So like when I paint, I always dab with um, paper towel. And so you're gonna wanna have some paper towel with you to dab your uh, watercolor so that you can get different uh, hues and variety 
Also, another thing I like to do with watercolor, I don't know if that would fit for this project, but if you have any salt. Oh, yeah, the salt's really cool. We so, could do some salt if you guys want really to. Cool. So, we could do these in salt. That'd so, awesome. everybody get some salt for tomorrow, too, and have it ready because we can do some salt watercolor. Again, right here. Um, oh, Bowie. And it's just regular old fashioned table salt. Bowie. Bash. Oh, they're being puppies today. They spent the whole weekend outside, and now they're like my guard dogs. Granted, one weighs 11 and one weighs 15 pounds, but they're going to they're gonna stop the big uh, uh, German shepherds that walk by. <laughs> it's so funny. I have an 11-pound dog that thinks that he is uh, 111 pounds. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, bash. Oh, my goodness. He has an attitude. Mm -hmm. He's sassy. He is sassy. All right, guys. So we have, so far, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, of these teardrops. And then, like, you know, that shape right there. And then we're going to start right here. And we're just going to draw another teardrop. Again, this whole page is set up so that we can make teardrops so that we can overlap and place these on top of our collage when we're in here the next time. And so when you create a collage, you need to go through first, obviously, like what we're doing, and create pieces. And then next to that teardrop right there, we're just going to go through and we're going to draw just more teardrops. Like I said, it's pretty easy. Now, the painting part's going to be a lot of fun. I love watercolor. I do, too. I wish I was better at it. Well, you I you get be better with practice. Out. You always get better with practice. So I think watercolor um, portraits of people are so cool. Those are awesome. Oh, so the chicken is crying. Who's crying? The chicken is not crying. These are. Oh yeah. Oh, that's yeah. That that's so funny. The chicken's crying. They think. Yeah. Nope. It's not crying. See, what we're doing is we're creating all of these little teardrops that are gonna fit inside for the headpiece of this cockatiel or cockatoo or whatever the name it is. I don't know. So that's what we're creating right now. All those fun little pieces practice that we need. Practice makes perfect. It I'm does. Have to go home and practice. <laughs> and in here, we're going to make a letter D again backwards. And then if you want to use a ruler, you can. If not, no big deal. There we go. And again, you'll have some extras probably. I did. I had some extras that I just didn't want to put on mine. But the whole thing is overlapping and layering. It's really important. So we have this D here. We're going to draw a circle right here. I know. I can't believe we drew a circle and all those uh, fun little uh, teardrops. <clears throat> and below that, we're going to draw a smaller, rounder teardrop. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> oh, I've been sniffing. Mm, mm, mm. I, I am. I know. My, well, my Claritin, let me tell you. Oh, it works wonders, <laughs> but it takes about a couple hours to work. Now, look. Big, 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 big teardrop right here. You want to go pretty big on that. So we have one, two, three big teardrops. Yep. We need the four big tear or three big teardrops, and we've got one on our other page right here, a big teardrop. That is for the headpiece. So you need a big one. All right. Now put a little one right here. Awesome. And then <clears throat> In this area right here, you can draw a medium-sized teardrop. And so when you get done drawing these today, the next time we come together tomorrow, I need you guys to have, if you don't have watercolor paint, I just wanted to show you today what happens. So there's those teardrops. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put that up higher. On, oh gosh, yeah, on that. But I wanted to show you what happens if you don't. Can you get me some Crayola markers real quick before we get off? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you don't have watercolor paint and you only have Crayola markers, get me a yeah, red, get me all kinds of fun colors. 
All right, I wanted to show you what could happen. So let's say for tomorrow, I wanna make a yellow perfect. Red and yellow is perfect, I can make it orangey. So I've got my teardrop. I don't want anyone to do this today. I just wanted to show you. Just an example. Just an example. So I'm gonna take my red and I'm gonna rub it on there. And then I'm gonna take my yellow and I'm gonna rub it on too. And then I'm gonna take water and then I'm gonna try to blend those together. And you can see the more water I put on it, the more blendy it becomes. And you can actually get some orange in that yellow and some the red will actually kind of like come together. But again, this is not the best way to watercolor paint. But again, beggars can't be choosers. But that will still work if you need to use. Also, we do have a video on this. Um, yeah, page. way back. Way about, back, about three, maybe three, four weeks ago. Uh -huh. Will you get me a blue one real quick? And then I'm going to yes. show you real quick. Um, so I'm going to show you with blue and yellow what happens with blue and yellow real quick too when you mix them together. There blue in here? Um, then get me. There is no blue in there. Nope. Oh, hold on. What about in that bag? I already checked. You did. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have no blue Crayola. Hold on. You did check that bag? Yes, There's no blue Crayola there? Oh, goodness. Okay, well, give me a purple, and I'll do purple and red. All right, so there's another one, like I've got my purple here, and say I wanna mix it with some red there, and I kinda overlap, and I've gotta go quickly, but I can actually, you know, put that together with some watercolor paint and so a lot of water. It's not as pretty as watercolor at all. You can see that it's starting to dry out, but it will work. Um, you can see the difference that watercolor paint makes. Like you can just go get one of these. You can get one at the dollar store for like a dollar. I mean, I'd rather you, but I don't want people going out that shouldn't be out. And then, you know, there's my yellow mixing with my red right there. And you can see the difference that that really makes. Okay, like that. See the mix right there? Oh, that's so pretty. And we're going to mix some colors together like that the next time we're together. So, all right, guys. What you'll need tomorrow is a paintbrush, watercolor paint if you have it. Scissors, maybe. No, no scissors. We're, painting, we're just painting okay. tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to paint. Um, any more questions before you go? Can you crack? Yes, we have a video on that. Open. Yes, you can. Yes, that you can crack open. We have a video Okay, so if you have an old Crayola marker that's dead, okay, guys, this will work for watercolors, okay? Like my red was almost dying on me. You can actually take some scissors, or not scissors, but a knife, and get it on a cutting board, and you can crack it open, okay? And then you can actually put it in water overnight, and it will make a gorgeous watercolor. Gorgeous. Or if you want to... You could just take your, where's my red, Lindsay? I already put them up. Okay. You could just actually take this, throw it in there. But I think it's better because if you crack them open, you've just got that um, sponge part. And that will make a beautiful watercolor, I promise you. Um, what color watercolors? Okay. If you have red, yellow, and blue, your primary colors... You can pretty much make anything. And if you have a black, that would be great too mm -hmm. for shading. In watercolor, there are no white. Why the is there no is white? white? The paper is white and water, when added to watercolors, is white. And I'm not, I there is a white. I'm showing you, there is a white. But really, you don't need a white in watercolor. Because if you want to make something whiter, you, you just, just add water. water. Yeah. So if you want something to be whiter, you just add more water, okay? So get your watercolors ready for tomorrow. Um, if you need any help, again, I want you to Facebook me on Messenger or I want you to email me at wmeyer at hse.k12.in.us if you live in the Fishers area. And can you do this as soon as possible? I would really appreciate this if you could do this as soon as possible. If you need brushes, 
if you need, oh my gosh, I almost did the cardinal sin. I've done this before and I've drank it afterwards. I almost put my paintbrush in my coffee. <laughs> oh, I was so close. Um, oh, so please guys, yes, Pete and family, let me know, okay? Please, please, please. Please let me know if you need uh, paint brushes, okay, Pedens? We're going to get them from yes. Mama Meyer. So I need to know if you need paint brushes. You guys promise me that you're going to let me know that. So as always, keep art in your heart. Tomorrow we will start painting. I'm so excited. Have a great day, Have guys. Have a great day. Enjoy the nice weather. It's going to be bad the next few days. Is it? Yeah. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. We love you. Have a great day.